fellow cyborgs, and welcome to part two of my Scotland book haul. This video is going to include books that were purchased in Scotland, but aren't necessarily Scottish themed. If you want to see those books, check out part one of this haul, link down below. Edinburgh is a city of books and bookshops, to be exact. There were many that I could have gone to, many I did go to, and I didn't even crack the surface. I've noticed that Google Maps is absolutely useless at figuring out what's a bookstore and that it's near me. I don't know what it's doing. I found more wandering around than by Googling, which is shameful, Google. I thought you ran the world. I digress. The first bookstore that my family and I went to was the Princess Street location of Waterstones. And Waterstones and Blackwells is the big chain in the UK, to my knowledge, whereas you've got Chapters in Indigo in Canada, and now only Barnes and Nobles in the US. And there, my mother needed to pick up some more books because she was running out of books. At the moment, she is on a science fiction haul, per my suggestion. One of the books that she picked up up and has then bestowed upon me is the second book in the Thrawn trilogy by Timothy Zahn. It's a Star Wars book. You may recall the first book of this trilogy, Heir to the Empire, in one of my previous book hauls. There have been many I know, but it's there. I read the first one, I really enjoyed it, gave it four stars, and so when mom was finished reading this, I said, please give it to me, I would love to read it. In my previous video, I mentioned that I bought two books at the gift shop of the National Museum of Scotland. The first one was a book of Scottish folk tales, and the second is this, The Cat and the Moon and Other Cat Poems, and I believe it's published by the British Library. This I have already read. It was a very fast read. It was very cute, and as it suggests, it is filled with poems about cats. Some of the poets represented here are the likes of William Butler Yeats, Emily Dickinson, Shelley, Chaucer, you get the gist. The poems are short in length and spend many a year and all contain a feline friend. So I enjoyed it and it was definitely worth a read. Next, my mom and I ventured into Armchair Books, which was recommended by Chauncey Boddington. It is apparently her favorite bookstore. I personally did not buy anything in there, but it was very fun to roam the vintage stacks. My mom actually bought a book, though. She bought the third book written by Hugh Howie called Dust. She had thought about purchasing it in Waterstones, but good thing she didn't because she got it for two pounds at Armchair Books, where it would have been something like nine or 15 at Waterstones. Then we moved on to Edinburgh Books, which was a fun little bookstore. They had a downstairs section that was full of tons of nonfiction. They had an entire room on Scotland and Scottish history, and in their fiction room, I spied a book called I Am A Cat. I don't remember the author's last name, but since then I have ordered it on Amazon because it's a Japanese author, it's a book from the perspective of a cat, it's a social commentary from this snarky street kitten. It sounded awesome, but I saw it in Edinburgh Books first, and I will always remember that. Next, we ventured far and wide and finally found Looking Glass Books, and it was absolutely worth the trek. This is an adorable little bookstore with a cafe inside, mismatched chairs and tables where you are encouraged to sit and enjoy not only the confections, but also the literary marvels. If you want to see more of the inside, I'll link down below Chauncey Boddington's video that shows some of the inside. I was too chicken to film in there. The shelves are just beautifully displayed. The books, they don't have very many, but the ones that are there, they obviously treasure. They have publisher spotlights as well as the simple genre distinctions. I enjoyed that bookshop so much. I bought three books there. First book I purchased was pointed out by my mom, who's always trolling the children's section, and it is Miss Hazeltine's Home for Shy and Fearful Cats, written by Alicia Potter and illustrated by Brigitte Siff. I have already read this because it's a children's picture book, but 
I just couldn't leave it behind with my cat fostering that's been happening recently. This seemed just so apropos to my life at the moment. Miss Hazeltine is this weirdo, I say affectionately, who lives alone and takes in these cats that are just shy and fearful that people don't have the patience for. She ends up getting into a lick of trouble and her fearful and shy cats find their bravery and come to her rescue. The end papers are adorable and the illustrations have these nice muted tones and the story is absolutely adorable. The pains that Miss Hazeltine takes, the patience that she has for these cats, it's just very sweet. And as I say, the story has a nice little happy ending, so it's a very heartwarming book. Next, I was ogling the Pushkin Press display because Pushkin Press is known for publishing a lot of translated work and I am so bad at reading diversely that I would really love to read more diversely, obviously, and translated fiction is a great place to start at least, and I ogled this book the most and had to take it home with me because it is beautiful and it is called the Rabbit Back Literature Society and it's written by Passi Ilmari Janskalainen uh, in originally in Finnish. I don't speak Finnish, not even a little bit, so I probably butchered this wonderful author's name. I did my best. I can't really tell you what this is about. The back makes it sound a little bit like the Thursday Next novels where literature is being mucked around with, but the thing that really got me was the first page or so. So if you don't mind, let me read you an excerpt. One. The reader was at first surprised, then shocked, as the criminal Raskalnikov was abruptly slain in the middle of the street, right before her eyes. Sonia, the hooker with a heart of gold, shot him through the heart. It happened midway through an essay on the Dostoevsky classic. The reader's name was Ella Amanda Milana. She was 26 years old and the possessor of a pair of beautifully curving lips and a pair of defective ovaries, among other parts. The assessment of her lips had been given to her that same Thursday, five minutes before the end of the lunch hour, by the biology teacher. She'd been told about the faulty ovary by a doctor 14 months earlier. She'd left the doctor's office a woman with something cold and defective at her core, though the day outside was still warm and sunny. Three months after the diagnosis and a couple of days after Ella's engagement was broken off, events had taken a turn for the better. She'd made a mental inventory. First off, she had good lips. Her fingers were said to be delicate and beautiful. Her face couldn't be called beautiful, as she had sometimes been reminded, but it was a pleasant face, sensitive, even appealing. She could see that for herself in the mirror, and a lover had once detected something artistic in the color of her nipples. He'd gone at once to gather up his oil paints from somewhere in his apartment and mix the pigments for three hours before he'd got the hue just right. Ella Amanda Milana stared at the page of notebook paper. There were 37 high school students sitting in front of her whose essays she was supposed to correct, and she was thinking about the color of her nipples. The unexpected literary murder had taken away her focus. She could no longer maintain her abstract role as reader. Not today. Not in this class. So, yeah, that... I, I can't really, it pulled me in, as you can tell, just the way it switches back and forth, the way you already understand Ella Amanda Milana, like, that was a page and a half, and I already kind of get the gist of her. Bonus, her middle name is my first name, and she's 26, I'm 25, I feel like we're gonna be bros. But anyway, I want to get to this very soon. I'm very eager to read this. I think it is going to open up a whole new world of Finnish fiction for me. And finally, this last purchase was a bit of an impulse buy because the title sounded enchanting. It was translated fiction as well, this time from Spanish. And my mom said I should, so, you know, it happens. It is the Book of Imaginary Beings by Jorge Luis Borges. 
And as I said, this is translated from Spanish, and this is a mock encyclopedia of imaginary beings ranging from the more customary unicorn pegasus and to things really specific that I have never heard about and perhaps he completely made up himself. Apparently the joy of this book is in his commentary. I haven't read anything by Borges before, but I have heard him mentioned by Chauncey Boddington a few times. I trust her judgment in valid literature, in literature worth browsing at least. This is pretty small. I thought it was a lovely place to start. And you know me and loving my fairy tale mythology creature whateverness. So it seemed like a dust storm to love, and I picked it up. Next, my mom and I trekked again to another secondhand book shop, which happened to be closed just for the day, I think. I don't think it was out of business or anything, which was a shame because it was a little out of our way, as were most of these bookshops. But fortunately for us, right next to it was a Blackwell's, and we couldn't resist going in and checking out another location. Plus, we wanted to get a book for my sister, and we had a list, and Blackwell's was the best bet that they would have it. Whilst we were there, and I was just browsing around, I came across this the Boy with the Cuckoo Clock Heart by Matthias Meltzieu. Oh my goodness, where do I start with this? When I was taking French class in college, my French teacher played a music video called Tais-toi mon coeur by Dionysos, a French band. The music video was awesome. It was this guy with a clockwork heart and he loved this lady and she never recognized him and he just wanted his heart to shut up because he couldn't continue on with his life and it was so Tim Burtony it was actually in stop-motion animation I believe as well which was like a extra Tim Burtony and so I found the song on my own found the album bought the album and have been listening to it in the years since and this was the book that inspired that album it's written uh, Maltzieu, he is the lead singer of the band Dionysos, and he wrote this book first and then wrote the album to accompany it, and I suppose because this just inspired him so much that there was so much more he could do with it, but just in another medium. I am already halfway through this book and it is absolutely delightful. I do say that I can tell that it's been translated. I feel like some of the word choice isn't as um, nuanced as perhaps it should be. I think some sentences were translated more literally rather than connotatively, as really excellent translators try to do, I think. I don't know very much about translation, and that's a bonus because this is another translated work, translated from French. Third bonus, it's steampunky because it's a boy with a clockwork heart. Uh, fourth bonus, it starts out in Edinburgh, which is where I purchased the book and a city that I will always cherish in my heart. So this was, it was, there were, there were so many more pros to buying this than there were cons. So I said, sure, take my money. I hope that this book continues on in the really exciting vein that it has begun. I'm really enjoying it, as I said before, and I hope that I continue to do so until the end. Finally, the last bookstore that we visited was called Golden Hair Books, and this was an absolutely beautiful bookstore. The, like, just the shop face was beautiful. Do you see that signage? That's that's above and beyond. And it was this small little store, not a lot of books in it, like I said, a little bit like Looking Glass books. And they had so many books that were displayed face out. It was almost like walking through an art exhibit. It was that sort of care that was put into the displays. We visited this, my mom and I, after a very long hot and sweaty day. I already had quite a number of books in my possession, but one caught my eye. Now I'll say up front, it did not come home with me, but I have it in my mind and on my Goodreads to read list, so I will not forget it. But it was a book of poetry called In the Cairngorms. I believe the poet is Nancy Shepard. I haven't memorized it though. My mom and I on our bus tour up to Loch Ness went through the Cairngorm National Forest, but 
As I said, I left it behind, but if I want some natural Scottish poetry, I know precisely where to start. So that concludes my Scottish book haul. I hope you enjoyed your journey with me through the virtual streets of Edinburgh and to the different bookshops that I visited. Please leave me in the comments down below what sorts of books you like to buy on vacation. Are they books of necessity because you've run out of the ones you've brought? Are they books of place? that take place in the place where you are? Or are they just books that you couldn't part with? What are your preferences and what are your habits? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank, thank, thank you for watching and until next time, continue to be lovely. Written by pa Passi Ilmari Jansk <laughs> Janskalainen. I'll try that again.